MMM Park opened its doors for the first time last year and is a museum you guys probably never heard of. It has a huge collection of weapons, uniforms, armored cars, tanks and a lot of rare vehicles. They even got a 1-1 scale diorama of a bunker complex with a German boat inside. The whole scene made me nostalgic for Medal of Honor and their U-boat mission. Some of their collection also gave me more nostalgic flashbacks because a lot of their collection came from the closed Victory Museum in Hollande, Belgium. A museum I visited many times as a kid and was the first really gigantic World War II museum I ever been to. Inside the museum halls, outside and on private grounds a lot of vehicles are waiting restoration. Vehicles like the ARL 44, a Panzer IV, the only B1 in the world and four B1 BIS tanks. And of course these B1 BIS tanks have a really interesting story to tell. The Char B1 is a bit of a weird one. The French first designed the B1 as a self belt gun. Then they plopped a turret on there and they wanted it to be their breakthrough vehicle. And when the VCM 2C or Char 2C proved to be a failure, they wanted it to be their main battle tank. The Char 2C was a super heavy tank developed during World War I and has all the landship trademarks. It was even developed by a shipyard and was pretty much outdated when they finally rolled out of the factory. They were simply the ARL 44 of World War I and like the ARL 44 their only use was propaganda and they would never see real action. The B1 proved to have poor anti-tank capabilities and was expensive to produce. So the Char B1 BIS was developed with better anti-tank firepower, more armor, a new turret and of course all this new stuff they also needed a new engine. And even with all these upgrades it still had a lot of problems that were never solved. Some of these problems were the high consumption, a cramped one man turret with bad vision to the outside world and it was already pretty much obsolete. So the only thing the B1 had going for itself was its firepower and armor. And in some cases, some B1 BIS tanks took on overwhelming German numbers by themselves, holding them off for hours. And because of this, Germans really feared this tank and had a lot of losses because they had almost no tanks or guns that could take it out. The only thing that could take it out was the Panzer IV with its short barreled 75. And it needed to get up close and personal with the B1 to do this of course favoring the B1. But the French lost a lot of B1s because of bad tactics, poor counter offensives where the B1 was out of place and because of breakdowns, low fuel and ammo where the crew were forced to abandon their tanks. What is the history of this tank? Did it serve with the Germans after it was captured? Where was it knocked out or abandoned? I've been searching through many forms and sites to find out more about this. And all I know is that it was a range wreck at some point in time because of all the damage. And that it was on display at Fort de Saclan together with a rare B1. So as you can see this tank has a lot of damage, what I think was done by modern ordnance when it was a range wreck. Also the other B1 chars that they have in their collection are not much different. The rarest in their collection is of course the B1 and came from the same place as the Charwi Mabis we are looking at right now. Just like this one, the other three B1 Bis are also waiting for restoration. Two being complete wrecks and only one being a pile of metal. Still the pile of metal is a complete tank that was found in the ground and was probably blown up and buried after the war. The only B1 BIS that has a complete history is the fourth char in their collection, named Yantrapeed. This B1 BIS probably ran out of fuel somewhere near Meurthe on June 1st, 1940 and was sabotaged by its crew and abandoned. It's not known if it was used by the Germans after the war. Like always I'm going to have a look at all the footage I made and narrate a bit over it all. 
So I will be switching over to live me in a few moments. So I hope you enjoyed this bit of history and see you in my next video. So live me here. Um, yeah, what we are looking at now is the engine bay. You can see the leaf springs for the suspension on both sides here. And this is of course the top where the turret is above us. You can see a lot of uh, shrapnel damage on the left side here and you look straight into the engine bay. And on the right side uh, you can just not see it but okay there's some damage above here and some huge damage on the left side on the back side here where the engine is I have no idea what caused those uh, the things that you see here on the vendor or yeah not really the vendor are the jacks they would uh, place them to the side of the uh, the GRB and would fasten them and yeah and it would pull up the GRB one that's the only way they could uh, uh, jack the charby up high enough so they could uh, do track uh, maintenance and such and you can see the gun the other gun is pretty much all complete the other side uh, uh, doesn't have tracks some huge damage on the front here as the other side is pretty much in uh, in good shape yeah most of this was filmed with uh, two different cameras so yeah this is uh, footage from my gopro and here you can see the same damage we had uh, a look at right now of course i cannot walk all around the tank but yeah that's something we have to deal with here uh, here's the main gun or man the all gun we have another gopro look here panning down another gopro look from uh, under the turret and as you can see the turret ring and the gun inside the turret you can see some small penetrations some of the side uh, damage again and the uh, four big holes on the side of this tank so next time i want to have a look at this little guy right here and um, yeah let me know what you think about uh, the char b1 in the comments below and uh, thank you for watching and we'll see you in my next video